Hey there, Munchy Mafia. Today we're going to be making smoked seafood chowder. This is my father's recipe, except for he didn't smoke his. And I'm sharing this with you all after holding on to this recipe for so, so long. Nobody except for one person in this world knows how to make my chowders. So let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so let's run down the ingredients that we're going to be putting into the smoker. We've got five years of corn. We're not going to use all of it in the chowder, just a couple of them. It's just, they were five for two bucks, so I had to buy five. So I'm going to eat them anyway, but as a separate meal. And then what we did was we uh, took a salmon filet and we skinned it and then cut it into pieces and wrap them in banana leaves. The reason why we do this is so that the fish stays moist and that it doesn't get too overly smoky, but stays flaky and, and nice um, through the smoking process. And then we also have a pound of um, hickory smoked bacon Funny story about the clams, I went to the store, they had bags of fresh clams, and I went to grab the last bag, and this woman snatched it out of my hands. I'm like, hey, I was buying that. She goes, I need it more than you do. You look like you need to go over to the produce section and buy more produce. Whatever the hell that means, I don't know. So we're cooking in our jammies today. Um my day off so I wanted to feel comfortable. We're also going to smoke all of this garlic because let me tell you when I smoked the garlic last week oh my god it was so good that I've decided that I'm going to be smoking off as much garlic as I possibly can and I'm going to just put it through the, um, the vacuum sealer and pitch them into the freezer for when I need them. It was so good so so good and the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some of these. We're going to do Cheetos Puffs. These are the Simply versions. I couldn't find the baked ones that Timmy was talking about. So um, these are the white cheddar. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the bag and we're going to dump them into a pan. I'm not going to do all of them. Um, I've never had these ones before. I don't know if these are any good. I like the fact that they're not that day glow orange. Um, hmm. Those are actually tasty, but I do love Cheetos. And as an added bonus, we're also going to smoke off the last of my peaches. So we're going to run out to the smoker, and we're going to stuff all this stuff in there. And we're going to come right back to the kitchen and get the rest of our chowder started so that it is ready by the time that all this is going to be ready. So see you in a few. All right, so we are outside, and we're going to open up the smoker. We're going to start stacking stuff. Now, there's going to be a stacking order here. We're going to put these, the Cheeto Puffs, on the very top shelf. Shove them in the back. And then we are going to get our garlic. Can you hand me the garlic? Thank you. Sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. All right. Now... We're going to just kind of try to figure out how to do this so that we don't plug it all up with a whole bunch of stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to put the garlic on the very top shelf with the, with the Cheetos because we don't want them to get cross-contaminated with the uh, salmon. I hope this view is a lot better than the last time. So my hair was in the way. All right, so we're going to just put these in there. Some of them are broken free, but that's okay. Just going to 
toss them in there. It's gonna be a lot of garlic. Will you get out of my butt, Cindy? Well, somebody is up my butt. <laughs> is she really? Is that what it is? Okay. All right. So there we go. Now we got that. And now we are got the. We're gonna go with the with the peaches next. Cause it's okay if these dribble. To get out of that. No, Cindy, come back here. She's got a paper from the from the uh, things. Garlic. Garlic. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next, we're gonna put in our <coughs> wonderful uh, corn. We're gonna put two corns there. Put the other three corns. Next shelf. And like I said, you know, when you're dealing with raw proteins, you want to avoid cross contamination as much as humanly possible. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just put them all on the second shelf. That should be enough space. Because we want to make sure that we're not choking anything out. All right. Now for our beautiful banana leaf wrapped salmon. Three and number four. All right. I got all that going. And as you can see, everything's all nice and stacked. Then we're going to close and grab the remote, turn it on. We're going to set the temperature. Whoops. To set the temperature. Come on. Okay, there we go. So 250 degrees, and we're going to set for one hour and 30 minutes. Set time, and now it should say working, and away we go. All right, so there we go. We got it all going, so we'll see you in about an hour and a half. Alrighty, so we're back in the house now. Everything's getting happy in the smoker. Now we're going to talk about the ingredients. Here we've got bacon, we've got chopped clams, salt, mirepoix, which is onions, carrots, and celery, red potato, half and half, sherry, butter, flour, and then we've got our herbs. We've got parsley, tarragon, and dill. Parsley, tarragon, dill. Yeah. Oh, and uh, the, the greens from the celery. Always use the greens from the celery, the leaves. Don't take the icky looking ones. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to pop on over to the stove that's already been preheating, and we're going to give it a little dollop of oil. And then we're going to take our mirepoix that's in the baggie, and we're going to just plop it right on in there. And we're going to let that get happy. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Yay. Let this get nice and happy. And what we're looking to do with this is to get it so that the hard vegetables, like the carrots and celery, are going to be softened. And the onions are going to be translucent. So let's get that all nice and shook down and in the pan. All right. Actually, I broke my spoon last. All right. So now next, what we're going to do is we're going to take care of our potatoes. And... Because these things have a tendency to roll, we're going to make one cut on the very bottom. Okay? That way, when we go to cut our potatoes into a small dice, I like mine in a small dice because I like to be able to have equal amounts of goodies.
to potato on every spoonful. Now we're going to look for any discolorations. We're just going to cut around that. We're going to throw that out, set those aside. These are planks. That's ugly looking, so we'll just trim that off too. Um, now we flip it around and we're going to cut them into batons. Save that. Nah. That's an icky part. Now the key is to make sure that you use or you cut your potato in uniform sizes so that they all cook the same. And there's a key to this. Let's go turn around and give this a stirry stir real quick. back over here and we're just going to give these a beautiful little dice and we're looking at about that size right there. And we have a lot of potatoes to cut so now this is this is a recipe that's near and dear to my heart in that I've held this secret recipe for a very, very long time. And I think it's time to share it with the world. Even my children don't know this recipe, but maybe eventually they'll come across this video when they have more time to spend watching videos and not so busy with their everyday lives that they can actually get a copy of this recipe. I know, I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk. So, uh, not giving the kids the family recipe, but releasing it on YouTube first. But, that's okay. Because... You know, one of the things that I'm very well known for are my chowders, whether it be clam or salmon or seafood or chicken corn, very well known for them. Um, people have come from out of state to even have my chowder. That's how good it is. And it's really a labor of love, really, because this actually can take numerous hours to make. So. But it's so good. I like to use reds or Yukon gold potatoes. I like the waxy potatoes as opposed to the starchy because... I don't like the way that they break down. They don't. They don't um, tend to fare too well after being heated and then reheated all over again. So these ones they hold up a lot better being heated and then reheated because there's only two of us. We're empty nesters, and. So we eat the same thing over and over and over again quite a lot because, to be honest, I really don't know how to make a small pot. As you can tell from that big pot that we've got just doing its thing right behind me. So These are pretty good knife cuts. I'm actually pretty happy with them today. For those that want to know, well, I haven't seen you really use those knives that often. All my other ones are dirty right now. Um, this is a Gunter Wilhelm, and it's an okay knife. I mean, 
for the typical home cook, it would be a good knife. For a professional chef, yeah, it's it's a knife. Um, they don't hold their edge very well. All right, time to spin around and give a stirry stir. See how these are going. And there's there's some controversy as to whether or not carrots belong in a chowder. Um, like, well, no, a white chowder is supposed to all be like white colored vegetables. Um, why do you put so many colors in your things? Well, because I like color. I'm a colorful person, believe it or not. I'm actually toned down quite a bit for YouTube because um, my colorfulness has a tendency to use a lot of cuss words. Um, it's mainly because of what I do for a living. Sometimes you have to put extra emphasis on a lot of things. Like, where the F is my... Why the F are you doing this? And so on and so forth. It's just typical typical kitchen talk. I actually met one chef who actually doesn't cuss at all and I thought that was a little weird in my day. So, we're coming up on the end of summer or weather is trying to hold on for dear life, but it's getting dark sooner and staying dark later. Pretty soon we're going to be in, in the full bore fall weather. So this is a good recipe for fall because who doesn't love soup season? I mean, if you don't like soup, I don't know what to tell you. Now, there's variations to this. You can make it however way you want. I'm just showing you how I make mine. And so, some of these ingredients you may not be able to use because it doesn't really fall into your, your budget. So, I'm going to tell you right now, it's perfectly all right to use canned salmon in this. I've had to use it before and I couldn't afford salmon. And it's not horrible. It really isn't. It's all about the technique and how much love you put into your pot of chowder. So yes, by all means, you know, if canned salmon and canned clams and canned shrimp, or no shrimp, for whatever reason, um, is in your budget, then, you know, that's fine. You know, don't feel like you have to make it my way. But at least you, you'll know, you know, the basics. You know, get your, get your mirepoix going. Um, and the mirepoix is one whole onion, four stalks of celery, the leaves from a whole bundle of celery. The ones that look nice, that is, don't take the light green ones or, or the ones that are like really sad looking. Um, and then there's um, two carrots, and I couldn't find any larger carrots, so they were just, you know, kind of medium, medium, small carrots. And then here we have seven potatoes which is probably too much. But I, I tend to cut my stuff real small because like I said, I like to have a good ratio of goody to vegetable. Not saying that vegetables aren't goodies, but you know what I mean. So um, then I got Argent the leftover, like about a pound and a half of um, Argentine shrimp. The red shrimp that we're going to add to it and um, of course these four cans of canned clams and like I said you know can't find something fresh 
or you can't afford the fresh stuff, that's fine. Use the canned ones. It's not going to not gonna really make much difference, especially after you've added all the stuff that you're going to add to it. People are not going to know, really, except for maybe Gordon Ramsay, but you're not cooking for Gordon Ramsay, so... You know, the key is to make food within your budget so that you can feed good food your family or your friends or whoever. We're almost done with our potato. Wow, she's in a mood. Dory! Okay. So, my dad and I had been in clam chowder cooking competitions in my youth. And we did quite well. And my dad had a little cafe, a little hole-in-the-wall little cafe in the Pike Place Market. Now, there had been some question as to whether or not my dad's clam chowder might have been the original, original Pike Place Market clam chowder. I've never really fully looked into that because, you know... Chowders are chowders. Every, every region has a different chowder. has some variation. Well, some are like this grayish color. <clears throat> well, some have uh, large chunks of potato. Oh, this is our one pound of bacon. We're going to add that to it because we're also going to incorporate the fat from the bacon into the roux. This is virtually a one-pot wonder, and I'll show you why in just a little bit. Dory, stop it! Oh my god. No, Dory. Alright, we are back outside, and the meat stick... I found out that I can't swap between my camera on my phone to the meat stick to go and check and see what the internal temperature is showing. So I had to do this all over again. Yay! Okay, so what we have here is it's been going for an hour and a half and we finally hit temperature. So we're going to crack this puppy open and we're going to get the salmon out. I know she's just being she's just being all oh, noisy over there. Okay. Woo. We used hickory smoke, by the way. Figured that since the bacon that we have in it is hickory smoked bacon, that we should probably stick with hickory smoked so that we don't have too many different smoke flavors. Although sometimes I've been known to, you know, mix and match woods but mostly only when uh i don't have enough wood to do a full smoke on something but i have enough wood of two different kinds so here we have that we're going to check our other stuff we check our garlic pull those babies out and see how soft they are oh my god just smell those are just gorgeous those we're going to actually pick these up and we're going to pitch them to the bottom shelf and we're going to let these go for a little while longer because they're just not quite where I want them to be. I want them to be a little softer this time around. They were still somewhat firm the last time I smoked garlic. Hoping my hair's not in the way again. Um, Dory's causing a ruckus. All right, because we also have on this shelf, oh, I hate these tongs, 
Now I know why I got new tongs. All right, come on. Oh my God. All right, I have to do this hard way. At least this time I brought a towel out. Don't know why I brought a towel out, but I did bring a towel out. All right. Oh, and our Cheetos. We got our Cheetos. Our Cheetos should be done and ready to rock and roll. They have a little bit of a color to them. But look at those. Aren't those gorgeous? Oh, those are going to be amazing. All right. Scoot those over. Move these out of the way for just a second. Put this on my chair. So I can get the rest of this garlic. Oh my God. Full of bloopers today. I'm telling you. All right. There we go. We have, oh, and that one just kind of fell down. I think our peaches might also be done. Let's take a look here. Yeah, let's let them do, let's let them hang out for a little while longer. So we're just going to let these go for a little while longer. I'm probably guessing that the corn probably isn't ready either, but we'll take a look. So, I'm going to peel it. Whoops. Almost dropped it. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Those are perfect. But the peaches and the garlic just need to hang out for a little while longer. All right, I did turn the temp up to 275. Probably making a mistake, but we'll soon see. Let's see. This one's a big boy, so... Yeah, those are ready to go. All right, there we have it. And close it back up again. And away we go. All right. So actually, that's warm. I'm going to grab this. Set that right there. I don't think that'll melt the tablecloth. All right, there we go. There's that. And there we have it. So we will see you in a bit. Get those over here. So this is kind of a subtle nod to a couple of people. My dad and of course the onesie women. I'm using their favorite Spurtle. They're back in action with Tiger again. Doing their thing. And they really love seafood. And they wanted to know when I was going to do something with salmon. So this is, this is part one of salmon. Uh, the next salmon is going to be next week. It's gonna be my vacation, so we're gonna have we're gonna actually have a live next week. We're just gonna just keep stirring and stirring and stirring, and um, this is gonna take a little bit, so we'll we will be right back. Now we're gonna just swing around and take a look at our pot. It's been going for a while, but you know it's done when we start to build up some goodies on the very bottom and. Um, that's also known as the fond. Our carrots are nice and softened. Our celery is nice and softened. Our bacon is nice and nice and brown. We're gonna add a couple of bay leaves. One, two, and then we are going to deglaze the pan with some sherry. This is just cheap sherry. And we're going to release all, all the goodie off the bottom of the pan and release it right back into the food. So that's where all the magic happens, right there. Now we're going to take the juice from four cans of chopped clams. You can also use minced. 
or if you are not into eating clams and shellfish, you can always just skip that and just add something else to it, like some vegetable stock. Or fish stock if you have it. Now I didn't have didn't have money to buy a whole salmon, so I'm so sorry that we're having to uh, you know cut a little corner, a few corners there. But as soon as I can afford it, I'm going to get a whole salmon. Show you how to break it down and how to make what's known as fume. All right, so this let this get happy for a little bit. I'm going to let it relax, but we're also going to pitch in a couple sticks of butter in there. Is we're going to start to build our roux and our roux has is one cup of flour and one cup of butter I think I might have put two cups in there like a dipstick okay we'll have to figure it out now one of the one of the secret ingredients is Creole seasoning which I added to the flour You can add however little or however much you want. And if you're not into using alcohol in your food, you can just omit that entirely and just just break it all down with the, just deglaze it with some uh, vegetable stock or fish stock or shrimp stock, whichever. There's so many variations to this because I understand that, you know, a lot of people um, out there either are allergic to shrimp and clams or they don't eat it for religious reasons or they just don't plain like it. Um, but also at the same time, if you're not into seafood at all, you could do this with chicken. And uh, what I would do is I would uh, smoke a whole chicken off. And then pull the chicken meat off of the off of the uh, carcass, and then make a chicken stock out of the smoked bones. But at the same time, you know, put a pan underneath your chicken in the smoker so you can catch the drippings, and use that as part of your base for your roux. So now we're going to now that we got our butter. Our butter is completely melted, so now we're going to just add our flour, and we're going to build our roux. Now we want to cook off that rawness of the flour, so we're going to just let it, we're going to reduce the temperature on the stove. And we're just going to give it stirry, 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 and more stirry, stirries. And you can already smell that beautiful bay leaf in there. Oh my goodness. All right. Now we are going to take our potato. I'm going to add our potato in there because now what we're going to do is this is this is the trick right here is we're going to add our milk or heavy cream or half and half or half and a half in milk or whatever you want we're going to add this in cold with the potatoes and we're going to just let this go low and slow so that the potatoes do not get overly cooked while also being uh, raw in the middle. Even though we've cut them into small bits, we just want to make sure that we have them cooked all the way through. So that's a key. That's where a lot of people go wrong is they 
get their liquid hot first and then they add their potatoes and then next thing you know it you know it's not bringing itself up to temp while the, the milk or cream is broken and the potatoes aren't, aren't even close to being done so this is why it's crucial to make sure that you are cutting everything small and that way it cooks more consistently all right so this is all stirred up we're probably going to end up having to hit it with a little bit more milk for the finish but we'll see how that goes so we're going to set it to a medium low and just let it do its thing while we're waiting for the rest of our stuff to to cook in the smoker so we will be right back all right so we're back inside our garlic is still going and our peaches are still going so now we're going to take our salmon and we're going to start breaking it apart and like I said this is really moist because we wrapped it look at that look at how beautiful and glistening that is oh my god I gotta have a bite mm. oh my goodness so nice and soft and supple and very hot so we're going to take it and we're going to just break it apart in little chunks we're going to feel around and see if there's some uh all right winning here you go a little piece of salmon for the cat i'm just going to feel around for some bones make sure that there's no bones in there and there isn't so far and now i mean look at that Look at the texture on that. It's just nice and soft. So banana leaves are very cheap. You can buy like a large pack of them at any, just about any Asian store. Not just a regular grocery store with an Asian section, but an Asian store. Like, I don't know if you have H Marts or Seafood Cities or anything like that, like we have here in Seattle. But or Wajamaya, um, any, any kind of Asian store, especially, uh, or even Polynesian stores will even have them. Um, so it just depends on how, um, how your city is. Some, some places, you know, they don't have a lot of options, especially rural areas in the Midwest, you know, Sometimes there's just not a lot of selections for that sort of thing. There's always Amazon. Yes, but, oh, God, Winnie, come get him. My sous chef is hungry. He's hangry. Um, trying to go after the shrimp. I gave him a little piece of salmon. He really liked that a lot, so now he's going to be really aggressive. Winston, Winnie, no. no. Winnie, no. Winnie, no, Winnie. Um... What was I saying? Thank you, Winston. Um, plus the smell from the banana leaves is just phenomenal. It's sweet and fragrant. Um, anyway, banana leaves, um, they're usually in the freezer section of uh, the Asian grocery stores. So you might not be able to get them at, at Amazon unless you got like, you know, like, the Amazon thing where you can order stuff, food, and have it delivered to you quickly. <clears throat> Sometimes they might have those sort of things. Some of the uh, uh, restaurant supply places might carry them as well. Um, this is also what I what I like to wrap my banana or my banana leaves, my uh, pork bellies in, or not pork bellies, pork butts in. Uh, just to just to give them a little bit of a little bit of protection from the heat so they don't get dried out um, it's really a good really good oh my god it's not it's not happening for me today nothing's happening right 
Um, anyway, so banana leaves. They're great. And you could just pop out however many you want. They're really, really super big. And uh, just put the rest in the refrigerator. And this one's got a lot of little, little tiny bones. We don't want bones in our soup. Not, not if we can help it. I mean, it's with a with a um, product like this. You kind of just might end up with some here and there. So now we're just going to transfer this over, plop it off into the pot. A little bite for Winnie. So maybe he'll leave me alone. Another couple bites for Winnie. Winnie, will you, oh my God. He's, he's elderly. He's uh, 18 and he's got feline dementia and he's just, I have a feeling that we're not going to be having him for very long, but much longer, but for right now he's eating fine and interacting just fine and getting around just fine. So we're just going to wait for him to tell us when it's his time, if he tells us. Um, all right. You know, just get in there with your fingers and just kind of break it up a little bit. I mean, that's just abs. Oh, the smell of this is just phenomenal. I wish, I wish there was such a thing as smell vision, because you guys would be like amazed. All right, so our chowder is really, really super, super thick for right now. So we're going to actually just give it a little bit of water. Normally, you would put like milk in there, but. Um, we don't generally have milk in the house. And now we're just going to stir, stir this all together. It's going to take on <clears throat> a bit of a pink hue here in a moment. All that, all that stuff that you see that's kind of floating to the top is the, uh, the Creole seasoning. And... There we go. Look at that. That's nice and chunky. We just put just a little, like, a cup and a half of water in there just to help it along a little bit. I'm going to turn it up just a smidge. And now we're going to get our corn. I'm going to let that, let that catch back up again. Let's take this turtle out. And let it sit there. The potatoes are al dente, so it's going to want to rest for a little bit. But we have a few other little things here and there that we have to do. I'm sorry, bud. There's no more, um, no more, no more salmon. No more salmon. It's all gone. 86 salmon. He's like, but mom, I want more. All right. Ramekin. So we're not going to use all this corn, like I said. I just got extra just so that, you know, something that we could nibble on with something else. <clears throat> we also have our our, uh, our shrimp. But for right now, we're just going to wait on that for just a moment. We want to get this corn in there. So we're going to just peel it. And here's the nice thing about smoking corn is that you could just leave everything on there and look at that. The rrr, the um the silks just kind of come off so much easier. So if you just leave it alone, it'll be just fine. Set this aside for a moment. Trim. That's kind of ugly, so we're not gonna put that in there. Alright. So now we're just going to shave down our corn. Right off the cob. What was that? Mr. Tablet just went bouncy, bouncy. Thank you, Winnie. All right. One. I think I'll save the other three 
We'll probably do like chili baked potatoes or something at some point. I didn't get a chance to do my pork tenderloin that I wanted to do. Somebody forgot to take it out of the freezer. It's not somebody being me. Alright, so. Yeah, I'm making a mess. So I'll just, you know, slice it off there. And there's some action going on in the pot behind me. Probably two herbs is going to be plenty. We'll save the other three for another time. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Knock my corn all over the place. <coughs> All right. Now we want to break these up so that we don't have big, big chunks. Not that there's a bad thing with big chunks, but there we go. Now we're gonna go and throw that into our soup, or incorporate it slowly, I should say, not aggressively. All right. There's that. Give that a stirry stir. <clears throat> now, this is the point where you want to start adding your, your fresh herbs. And the fresh herbs that we've got is parsley, dill, the celery tops, and tarragon. is pretty much ready to almost ready to rock and roll so we're gonna let it let it get happy for another 10 more minutes after this so now we're gonna stir stir and as you can see mine is not that gray color like the like the New England clam chowder is it kind of has a grayish tone to it mine actually has a blushing pink some of it's got to do with the salmon. Some of it's got to do with the Creole seasoning. And there we have it. Now that we've got that all incorporated. Oh, I forgot my spoons. <coughs> Typical. I always forget the spoons. we got to give it a tasty taste and see where we're at with the salt. See if we need to adjust adjust. That's a beautiful, beautiful soup. Mm. You know, kind of torn. Because we um, we seasoned the salmon and let it sit overnight in the fridge to get happy with its flavors. All right, so now we're going to come back over here to the, to the table. We're going to just take these shrimps now these are raw um, and we're just gonna break them up or we're gonna add it to the soup and let the soup just gently poach them now, there's a method to my madness um, when it comes to canned clams they have a tendency to turn to rubber bands um, so I always add those at the very very last But you want these to poach. So just, you know, break it off with your fingers. Little tiny little chunks. They don't have to be perfect. This is about a half pound, actually. Um, thought I had more. Now, if you can't find canned clams or you don't like canned clams, but you can afford to get the the baby scallops, you can get those frozen ones. Just thaw them out, drain them really well. And you basically want to let them poach as well in the soup. Make sure that, you know, the soup is not moving too rapidly. It's just happily just snoozing along at medium-low temperature, but as 
warm enough to actually cook them through because it doesn't really take a lot to cook shrimp also doesn't take a lot to cook um, scallops so you just go in just tear them up now if you want you can also use the canned the canned baby shrimp cocktail little tiny baby cocktail shrimp things or the cooked cocktail shrimp sometimes you can find those at a discount over in over in your your, um, your seafood section sometimes they'll have like you know a one pound package for really really dirt cheap those ones I think taste a lot fishier um, so you know just use your best judgment you don't mind that strong shrimpy taste that they have then by all means use them uh, the canned ones also have that that strong shrimpy flavor so I would just go a little easy to, you know just add one can at a time and see how it goes if you're gonna if you're gonna use a canned one all right so these are little tiny bite-sized pieces are almost there 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 we go just like that and now we're just going to take them over and we're going to add them to the soup pot. And we're going to give them a really good stirry stir and let the temperature catch back up again. It usually takes about 10 minutes because we don't want them overcooked. Because what will happen is they'll, before they totally break down, they'll be really rubbery. And then when they do break down, the texture is almost mushy. And you're looking for that sweet spot. And like I said, this, this pot of chowder is a labor of love. You've just got to, you've got to be in that Zen mindset where... You know, you're just you're you're just looking at making a really enjoyable meal. And yes, it's supposed to be this thick. Yes, Leanne. In case you're watching, Leanne, it's supposed to be this thick. Uh, Leanne is my is my assistant at work. And when I first met her, uh, it was a few years ago, and she was brand spanking new to the restaurant that I worked at and um, I had just pulled out of the parking lot was headed for home and I get this phone call from my sous chef and my sous chef says she wants to add heavy cream to the chowder and I said who does uh, the new chick I said no absolutely not because you can't just put raw cream without it you know without at least reducing it a little bit um, into a chowder. You just can't do that. Tell her to put it back. Oh, I did. Okay. Well, she wants to try to. She says that the th chowder is too thick. I said, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way. Tell her it's supposed to be that way, and she's not to touch it. So, um, we ended up becoming really good friends after that, after I got over, got over that anger, um, we ended up becoming really good friends, so that was a good thing, and of course, we had to be really good friends in order for me to, you know, say, hey, I'm going to hire you in my new kitchen, how do you feel about working in a jail, so, anyhow, I'm Yes, we are going to get to the clams. So we're just going to pretend that 10 minutes have passed and we're going to dump the clams in there. So we're going to dump the clams. There's four little cans of snows. Now, when it comes to canned clams, snows, I think, is the best ones. Um, although the ones that I get over at Cash and Carry that are for, for restaurants that are the big the big cans, big tall cans, are actually pretty decent. Never was fond of the ones that, that Cisco carries. It's under the Portico label. 
they were fond of those, but uh, U.S. Foods now owns Cash and Carry, and so the ones that they sell are actually pretty decent. Um, not to bash on Cisco or anything, while bashing on Cisco. All right. Yeah, they've screwed me over a time or two. All right, so now we're gonna let this catch back up, stir from the bottom and bring up. We're basically folding so that we can get the bottom up to the top and the center brought out to the sides and the sides brought into the middle. To get that heat distributed a little bit more evenly. We're gonna cap it and let it do its thing for about 10 minutes. So we will be right back. Okay, now we're back. We've let our shrimp poach gently in the soup, and now we've got our baguette. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut up some baguette to go with our soups. Cut them nice and gently. This knife is pretty harsh. And I grabbed one of the clove or one of the bulbs of garlic out of the out of the thing. Let's make sure that I got audio. Yes, I have audio. Okay. Uh, so five, probably eight, six, seven, eight. Nothing beats Costco and their baguettes. They make freaking amazing baguettes. And they just put these out yesterday. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. All right. Then we have our garlic. So now all we do is we just grab it and we uh, give it a squeeze. It should peel pretty easy. It's, this one's a lot softer than the last batch that I made. I let it go a little bit longer. Plus, it also helps that um, that the smoker was pretty much empty because we had taken just about everything out. So we're gonna take a. Oh God, they're hot. Oh my goodness, but they smell so freaking amazing. Um, I don't think I'll ever eat just regular garlic ever again. Um, so I roasted off a whole lot of them and let them cool overnight and then we're going to vacuum seal them. Probably need one more clove. Scare off the vampires. All right. There we have that. Move that out of the way. Now we're just going to take it and we're just going to just kind of mash it with the fork. Look how nice and easy that was. Mashy, mashy, mashy. And salty, salty, salty. And now we're just going to put it in with our butter. And guess what we're going to do next? Yes, we're going to mixy, mixy, mixy. All right. Squish, squish, mix, fold. Squishy, squishy. Mix, fold. There's just something quite exquisite about roasted garlic. But slow roasted garlic in the smoker. Oh my god. Next, I'm going to try smoking some butter to make some clarified butter. Clarified smoked butter. Do up a nice pasta dish. There we go. And while there's already salt in the butter, a little bit more salt never hurts. All right, Let's set that aside. And now I'm just gonna bring over my 
cast iron trumpet. Always bring the pot to us. There's that. Uh-oh. I left him over there. <coughs> over the cables so we don't knock the cameras over. And then we have a bowl. We have another bowl in there. We have the soup. Now it has separated a little bit. That's just the whoops all over the place. Yeah I know. Oh my god. So like I said before, I wish we had smell vision. So we're just gonna foldy 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 and get those spices back in there. This smells so divine. Hopefully I put enough corn in there. I'm almost tempted to throw some more corn in there, but less is more, right? Okay. How gorgeous that is. That's just phenomenal looking. Has nice body to it. <coughs> now if you want, if you have a grill, you can grill your bread. You don't have to. You just have it just nice and soft and pretty. So gonna just tear a little bit of dill to sprinkle over the top yeah I know but Sivvy didn't you put a whole bunch of dill in there yes I did is it enough probably not all right and this is tarragon now if you if you're not fond of the licorice flavor that tarragon imparts by all means don't include it no make it your way but this is how we make it our way this is my award-winning chowder, or one of my award-winning chowders. All right, Munchy Mafia. So let's go in for the money shot. All right. I don't know how well you can see that. Can we see that? Up a little. Up a little? There you go. And there we have it. Smoked seafood chowder with some baguette and smoked roasted garlic. And a big mess all over my counter. Okay. So, it is that time, Munchie Mafia, for us to say goodnight. So, with that in mind, don't forget to cook with love and eat with passion. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good night.